Hi, I'm Eugenia Gamble, author of Tending the Wild Garden, Growing in the Fruit of the Spirit. Thanks for spending a moment with me as you prepare to study Spirit Goodness or Generosity, Chapter 7. The concept this week, generosity, goodness, is in some important ways similar to last week's kindness, goodness. There are some differences, though. The spirit kindness that we talked about last week has the capacity to sort of mellow out our character. The word this week is bolder. It's active. It's never violent, but it can be quite confrontive. Spirit goodness, generosity, takes goodness to the streets. It is always focused on the greater good. The person in whom spirit goodness, generosity is ripening will be bold and courageous, will find a way, as the late John, Representative John Lewis, that great civil rights icon said, will find a way to get in good trouble, to get in the way of that which causes or perpetuates harm. Spirit goodness, generosity, pours itself out for the sake of righteousness, justice, love, and equity. It is always concrete. It is zealous for the truth and will not accept lies as truth, no matter how comfortable or palatable those lives lies those lies may be. This is the Greek word used to translate the Hebrew of God's goodness in parting the Red Sea to lead God's people out of slavery. In short, this aspect is spirit working through our own actions to bring liberation and healing. In this chapter, I tell a story with which I hope you will linger. It's the story of a parishioner driving home from Bible study who finds a woman in need lying on the side of the road. To me, it is a perfect example of how spirit, goodness, generosity works, what it takes, what it costs, and also the amazing ways that Spirit uses this ripened quality for transformation of an individual and of peoples. So I invite you to please linger a while with that story. Talk together about that incident. Do you think you would have behaved in a similar way? What other ways might you have expressed Spirit goodness? Do you think my parishioner was foolhardy? Have there been times when you have felt the tug to be a fool for Christ by embodying this kind of goodness, this kind of good trouble? Sometimes people recoil from this aspect for two reasons. First, it feels downright dangerous, and sometimes it is. But second, because it somehow feels political, and and, and we don't want to go there in this day and age. But here's the thing to remember. Spirit goodness will sometimes lead you into the political arena because the barriers to it, the barriers that must be addressed are often systemic and they need big solutions. So yes, spirit goodness will work through you in systems and can even come to operate in and through those systems. What Spirit will not permit is for her goodness to be corralled into partisan party politics. Spirit does not care if you are red, blue, purple, or polka dot. Spirit desires that goodness ripen and pour forth in every way, in every avenue, through who you authentically are. So if you have a partisan affiliation that's meaningful to you, 
the question to ask is, how do I embody spirit goodness through it? How do I ask spirit goodness to critique my assumptions? How is spirit asking me to do goodness in my context? Don't, don't let the divisions of the world speak louder to you than the spirit who more often speaks with nudges than bludgeons. Be sure to leave time in your discussions this week to talk about spirit goodness in individual actions, like the story of my parishioner. And also spend some time talking about what it means for public witness. How does your congregation display active goodness? Do your policies reflect the red See parting commitment to deliverance from oppression that is at the heart of this aspect? Are, are there barriers to inclusion in your church? Are there those whom you quietly think are not worthy of your time or effort? Do you have trouble offering spirit goodness generosity to any groups or peoples? Do you find it hard to offer that kind of active advocacy to yourself? At its heart, this aspect invites you to ask, who is ex excluded and why? Who is powerless and why? Who needs an advocate and why? And not only that, spirit goodness enables us to ask, what can I do? What can we do to change the situation? And then gives us the energy to get up off the couch and do it. Remember too, once again, I'm harping on this, I know, that the fruit of the spirit is not a Chinese menu from which you get to choose one from column A and one from column B and leave the yucky Kung Pao in the kitchen. The fruit is all of a piece. It is singular. If you want love and joy and peace and kindness and self-control and patience and all the other stuff, good trouble comes with it. So think about that and I'll see you next week.